Welcome back, guys, to our playthrough of Pokemon Black 2. Okay, so uh, we've got our first uh, gym badge. You can see it right down here from the uh, Spursha gym leader, which was uh, Sharon. Real quick, before we uh, dive in and go a little further to this, so at the time of this recording, this is a kind of a, a big day. So within the last 24 hours, I saw this earlier today before I recorded this episode, but over the last 24 hours, a massive leak hundreds of gigabytes worth of data uh, leaked from Game Freak and Nintendo and the Pokemon company and it is like a major disaster. Apparently some, I, I don't want to say hacker because I don't know if that's the right term, but someone was able to infiltrate their systems and acquire a bunch of beta information, updates on new games, updates on uh, an up, like a handful of like uh, animated the next movie, like animated projects a live action project over at Netflix like source code for, uh, for a handful of titles I I think um, I was watching I was looking at Centro leaks I, I, I just want to say like I don't know the person that runs that account I'm not thrilled with how they run it but they do have a lot of leaks and they have a lot of coverage and I've been watching that and it is nuts and I think this might be I don't know this might be the biggest league Pokemon has ever had and like ever I've never like all the information we're talking like lore about Pokemon how the Pokemon universe got started some like really dark lore about like Pokemon and people like oh my god some of the internal documentation that they revealed on like Pokemon lore is some of the most vile disgusting things I've ever read there's one about like some dude having like intimate relations with an octillery and giving birth to a child another one about like Pokemon like murder and like also uh how do I put this there's one story about this woman uh, who I guess her and her like comrades were going in and like slaughtering like like a, a sl uh, slack off and like killing Slackoth for fun and cutting off their body parts, like killing them, cutting off their body parts, doing all these horrible, horrible, grotesque things. And then it's implied that she was, um, how do I, how do I word this? That the Vigoroth got with her intimately as punishment and got her pregnant so that she would give birth to her own Slackoth and then her friends murdered her own child slash Pokemon and she like, I don't know, ended up like taking her own life as a like a dude. This is this is lore written with for the Pokemon universe. It is it's disgusting. Like I can't believe some of the things that Game Freak was putting in there. It is it is just unbelievable. But, uh, I mean, aside from the gross stuff, as you imagine, a lot of other beta Pokemon designs, early Pokemon designs, we finally got a look at what beta, uh, Rayquaza looks like. I think there were some images floating around that it was kind of like a, like a snake, but also a bird at the same time, which was really weird. It had, like, a beak and stuff. It wasn't, like, it wasn't the typical dragon design that we have. A bunch of other, like, unused Pokemon designs and some really cool ones that were not used. And I was like, dang, like, we could have... We could have had some really cool Pokemon designs that were made by Ken Sugimori. Like, there there were talks about, like, I guess, uh, other remakes and remasters of other generations of Pokemon games, too. So we might see those. Like, it's crazy. Like, there's some crazy stuff going out there. But the, uh, the relations between people and Pokemon on an intimate physical level and uh, a violatory level was enough to make my, my skin crawl. But if you take a look at Central Leaks, they have a breakdown of, like, every little thing that, that was spoken about. And I think there's someone in Discord, like, trying... It sounds like someone was trying to, like, uh, hold the information ransom. I, I would bet you anything it's probably some idiot teenage kid, but someone in Discord, they are basically saying, I've got the source code for these games, and I've got all this information. And I think they were holding out that Nintendo would pay them for it. And Nintendo actually made, I think it was Nintendo, either Nintendo or Game Freak or Game Freak through Nintendo had a, like, a, <clears throat> like a, uh, a public statement about the leak. So it is real. It is legit. And I will say this, while all this stuff is awful, like, and to make matters worse, it was a lot of personal information from, like, other, like, employees, like, their ID card badge numbers, like, their names, their email addresses, like, just, like, personal information that was, like, it sucks that that stuff got leaked. Like, it's, it's kind of fun if, like, you know, beta Pokemon designs get leaked, right? That's not really a huge, like, it's, it's a violation and it's, like, it's wrong. But, like, it's fun for us to see kind of, like, what they're, what Game Freak is trying to cook up. Um, but the other stuff is, like, really bad. Like, personal information of employees is bad. But the game stuff is interesting. And I do think that if the source code is leaked and if they share that out, then it's possible we may see a lot more Pokemon games and, like, otters and like other third-party companies like making pokemon games like this and it's bad for nintendo bad for game freak bad for uh the pokemon company 
but hopefully with the leak they'll be on their a game to tr because it's like if that stuff gets leaked i would think they would have to like you know i don't know compete with themselves basically because now everyone has their source code like don't get me wrong like it, i'm trying to find a silver lining it's wrong morally ethically it's bad you know whatever but like there's some stuff that was really interesting to see and i just feel like the modding community if they get their hands on a lot of that information they're going to create some really incredible tools to like make you know unique pokemon gaming experiences that nintendo and pokemon company and game freak just don't or can't or refuse to make or something so i don't know it's very interesting take a look at it central leaks is not like they don't have the best attitude and approach to sharing information but it is a, a good source but you could just google it like if you wanted to find out i don't know anyway i thought that was super interesting that made i was reading all about it today and it's some fascinating stuff but we're here for the game let's let's focus on this okay okay if you want to use so i think we saw this already okay Okay, now I believe if we go past Philosophy, we can get uh, down that road that was blocked by the hiker. What are my Pokemon levels at, by the way? I, we didn't change from the last episode, but Riolu's 14, Mareep's 14, uh, Azrael is 10. So Mareep is going to stay out in front because he'll evolve into Flaffy after the fact. Uh, Azrael is going to go into the box soon once I find a better water type. I know I can get a Psyduck at Philosophy if I wanted to and then get that to a Golduck, but probably not gonna happen um i don't i had a let me see i had a breakdown of who i wanted to be in my team let me review this real fast so i have a, a list um okay so this one for sure so riolu is probably gonna stay with me this is one i really want that one's got potential for sure um that one's gonna be on my team for sure is my fire type um this one is definitely going to be on my team. I'm very excited about this one. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. There's a couple that I'm looking at that I'm like, okay, are you going to be the one that takes my elemental slot? I don't know. I'm trying to decide here. Okay, let's see. We need to start a minute. Metal box. Aspersion gym. Okay. Okay, so we also, when we were over dealing with Alder's home before. Like, there was a uh, a little, like, grove back there. And apparently it's called Pledge Grove. And it says, The path behind Alder's house leads to Pledge Grove, a tiny clearing shrouded by trees. Bring Keldeo to inspect the deep cuts marked on the boulders, and it will learn Secret Sword, its signature move. As long as it knows this move, Keldeo will remain in its resolute form. Yeah, Keldeo is the horse. I didn't, I, I never liked that one. Mainly because, like, it's a My Little Pony thing, and that sort of creeps me out a little bit, but also because, like, the images that they have on Bulbapedia of, like, its ordinary form, like, it's got some cake. Like, it's weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like how they really emphasize the cheeks on this horse. Like, this My Little Pony has horse. It creeps me out. Um, okay. Tversha City, Trainer School, Gym. Yeah, we did all that. Okay. Philosophy Town. Okay. So let's just go that direction, and then we'll just read. I'm just keeping an eye on the Pokemon that'll be available here. Let's see, is it anything new? No, 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 don't care about that. Uh, I don't care about you. What is Mareep's experience total? Because we might be able to get him to evolve. No, no, this is level three. I'll do it, but not because it's gonna like really help me much. They have Sunkern out here as well in Route 20 coming up. Dunsparce, Audino, Patrat. Uh, Pidove, Pidove, Sawaddle. I always thought Sawaddle was cute. It's not really my thing as far as Pokemon on the team, but it is a cute Pokemon. I always, always liked Sawaddle. They recently had the Pokemon Community Day for Sawaddle, and I only got one. Dude, they're so stingy. I gave up on Pokemon Go after it just kind of became like a dumpster fire of microtransactions, which it's like it's always lived on microtransactions, but it got to a point where it was just like everything that benefited the player. They raised their prices. They... Um, they um, raise the prices and decrease the amount of like items that you can buy like which is just disgusting and then on top of that like it's just I think the new director of Pokemon Go I don't I don't know if it's still the same guy but the last time I looked it up I'm like this guy is a total d-bag hated the dude 
it was like right after lockdown stuff he was like okay well now that lockdown is done we're gonna increase the price of remote raid passes and give you less remote raid passes and we're gonna like decrease um or increase the distance between you and like selectable um locations like poke stops and stuff so it's like if you're in your house you know and you can see across the street and you're kind of like in that that range and you can just flick it and get it you can't do that now like it just it's that dude is just a money hungry jerk i can't imagine bianca hey I'm sorry, I forgot to upgrade the Pokedex that I gave you. I'm gonna add the habitat list. It's an amazing feature. I'm just gonna borrow your Pokedex for a second. Nice. With the habitat list, you can check which Pokemon are in the area. It's a mode in the Pokedex. To use it, open up the Pokedex and tap the habitat list button on the lower left of the touchscreen. Next, pick the area you wanna see. You can see all the Pokemon that live in that area. It even tells you which ones you've already caught. That's fine. I don't really care. I honestly didn't even like pay attention. I'm just reading it for the sake of moving on. I just I did not absorb what I just read. I have a tip for you. When you're walking down a path, you'll sometimes see rustling grass. If you go to that spot, well, I'll let the rest be a surprise. Is it? Hmm. I like that feature, but I don't know like what type of Pokemon shows up like in that grass. Like, is it is it special? Like, does it have high EVs, IVs? Is it a rare Pokemon for that particular grass patch? Like, what does that mean exactly? Is there anything special about it, or is it just not? Like, who cares? Filling up the Pokedex will make your world bigger, so go to many different places and meet many different Pokemon, okay? See you! Alright, um... Okay, on your way back to Flossacy, Bianca shows up again to upgrade your Pokedex with a habitat list, which shows every Pokemon seen and caught in the area. That is a useful feature. And she, she also reminds you that Pokemon can sometimes be found in rustling grass before heading off again. I am going to look that up, because hustling, hustling, rustling grass is highlighted here. Rustling grass is found in Gen 5 in virtually any area with patches of tall grass. Occasionally, a patch of grass can be seen shaking. Entering such a patch triggers a battle with a wild Pokemon. The Pokemon found in rustling grass differ from route to route, but all areas except Route 19 contain Audino. Interesting. In most areas, it is possible to encounter in rustling grass the evolved forms of Pokemon found in regular grass. Regular tall grass has a chance to start rustling for every few steps the player takes. Rustling grass will stop shaking if the player enters a battle or if they leave the area, even if that specific grass patch remains on the screen. Dark grass does not rustle. Interesting. Okay, so that's what that means. So it's either Audino or an evolved form of the Pokemon. So in this case, it would be an evolution of Purloin, Patrat, Sunkurt, Sunkern, Pydove, Sawaddle, etc. I don't really care for any of these. Okay, Route 20 is where we're headed. already done our thing here okay, I'm just reviewing the area once again this guy yeah he was on his blocking our path we need to get through that hey Sunkern a valid Sunkern appeared I wonder if this guy is like a hiker hiker named Jeff wants to fight or some nonsense is he gonna battle me Hey there, that gleaming thing there is the basic badge, but don't get all swelled head. It's a rough world out there. Here, I'll show you. Oh, this punk. And he's going to use rock types, probably. Unless it's just Pokemon in the general area. Because if he's using a rock type. Oh, it's Riolu. Okay. Fight. Let's go ahead and just thunder. We'll wave him. This might be enough to get me to the next level. No, maybe not. It'll be like right there. Yeah, I think it'll be like maybe just like a smidge right before we get to the level up. Why was I so conceited as a th Okay, I didn't even click a button and it just like took that away from me. Okay. All right, I'm beat. With dependable Pokemon like that, even a kid like you can hold your own against an adult. Yup. Thanks, bro. Okay, we got a few more trainers. Hello, it's Steuben. I'm the strongest trainer in Verbank City's a preschool. That was the wrong voice for a little child. I didn't realize it was going to be a little kid. <laughs> I, again, I really appreciate that the in-game battle sprite and the, like, overworld walking around sprites are actually the same. Thank God. I appreciate that a lot. Oh. Psyuk? Psyuk? 
Yeah, I didn't get as much from Riolo as I thought. Psyduck might give me enough. Get a Flaffy. Brilliant. Okay. Launch Lord Charge. I'll, I'll do it. Um, but I don't remember what charge does or if I care, but Growl is a useless move, so we're going to get rid of the Growl. Preschool Elbow. I guess I'm not the strongest in the world. <laughs> Alright. Really big evolution, or a really long evolutionary. Nice. Okay, we'll bring you up. Let's make you a little smaller. Well, I don't know. I don't want to make him like. I'll make him bigger. Eh, it's fine. We'll just say it's about the same size as Riolu. Nice. Flaffy is such a unique design. Oh, it's Sharon and what's his face? Oh, yeah. Come with me, you two. I forgot how I did Sharon's voice. <laughs> See the dark tall grass here? It's rare, but sometimes two Pokemon pop out at the same time. Also, the Pokemon that hide in dark grass are slightly stronger, so be careful if you walk through. If you're going to challenge the next gym, it's the Verbank gym. These might help. Thanks for the berries. Here's some for you. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's full captives is just oh my god that just kills me every time both of you do your best if you need anything call me on the x transceiver <laughs> here's some for you a-hole <laughs> sure and sure knows a lot and he found those team plasma thugs too Psh, i could have done it myself but you know i didn't want to i was too busy buying some hair gel so i could spike my hair gel up I've decided. I'm gonna get stronger than him. I mean, I already am, but like, I'm really gonna get stronger. You should do your best to fill up the Pokedex and have my back. Don't worry about me having your back, though, because you're a loser. Got it? And he's like, okay, I'm just, he's like, don't look at me. I'm taking a pee. <laughs> I love how he just like walked in the grass. Brilliant. All right, let's see. So now, this is dark grass, right? Is that what he was saying? Dark grass does not do like the shakes. Oh, I got a comment about this. Okay, so I I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't want a Venipede, but let's see, I got a comment about this earlier. Let me look at this real quick. This was important. Um, Let's see, where is this one? Where is this one? Where is this one? No. 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 Where was that comment? Where? Keep on going. Keep on going. I did get a comment. Somebody was like, uh, Hugh is nothing like that personality-wise. And I'm like, yeah, I figured. It's just funny. Dang it, where is this? Um, ah, here we go. Big J8809 says, Hell yeah, make sure you grab yourself a Venipede, nicknamed the Venipede Steamer. Also had trouble with the pronunciation here. Okay. So I will do that, actually. I will catch this Venipede for Big J. But I don't plan on using it because I'm not a Venipede guy, nor its evolutions. I just don't. Oh, you poisoned me already. Disgust. Does this generation like every step damages you or just is it just in battle damage? I'll catch it for you. I'll catch it for you, Big J. And this is something that I want to do. If you comment on videos while I'm still actively playing this playthrough or any Pokemon playthrough and you're like, hey, catch this Pokemon, name it this, I will. Unless, unless, the only exception is if it's a Pokemon I plan on having on my core team and it's a stupid nickname, I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not going to have one of my favorite Pokemon nicknamed like Buttlick or something like that. It's just not going to happen. I don't, I don't want to play like that. Maybe if we do a live stream of the games, of like Pokemon games uh, in the future, then we can, you know, we can talk about doing it that way. But, you know, nice. Okay, Venipede was caught. Big J, this is for you. All right. 
Using the feelers on its head and tail, it picks up vibrations in the air to determine its prey's location and state. Uh, yes. So one of the things, just kind of touching base on like the chatter about uh, the leaks and stuff, um, uh, I think it's important to note that Pokemon has always had like a really dark history. Like if you look at some of like the really really twisted pokedex entries like i think what was it drift drift loom or drift blim or something uh was is a pokemon that's like the, the balloon ghost or whatever like it was it talks about like sometimes it'll lure kids in to like i don't know I, this is just me trying to remember i can't remember if i'm getting a po another pokedex entry crossed i don't remember exactly what pokemon it was but in my head this is what i'm remembering so correct me if i'm wrong just don't be rude about it but uh it was basically saying that it like it, it kind of floats and lures kids like into the forest and like kids grab onto it and then it floats away with kids and they're never to be seen again and there's implications of like pokemon luring kids away from their families to like eat their souls or kidnapping them or like feeding them to like their child like you know baby pokemon or whatever like a lot of stuff like that it's nasty some ghost pokemon like i think part of the part of the issue for me is that when you, oh, i don't have i think i used a i think i had a a poison thing and i used it already i'm on the route where's the town oh i was gonna heal up first um hi there look at my awesome pokemon i'm guessing by her weird condom shaped hat that she's probably a preschooler too Preschoolers should not be allowed to have Pokemon. It should be like a, an age limit, I think, 18 and older. Because you are you have an elemental animal that can like burn down the world if you're not careful type of thing. Well, I guess it's, she's got a lily pup, so that's fine. But like, you know, a preschooler that can raise a Charizard, like that's crazy. But anyway, just talking about like the, uh, like the, the leak stuff, if I can remember what I was uh, talking about. Where was I? Go back, go back. What was I talking about? Oh, like in regards to like the Pokedex entries and stuff, like it's crazy to me how deep and dark some of those stories got. But like, there's a lot of really nasty Pokedex, Pokedex entries out there. And it's it's kind of creepy. Cause you gotta remember like, these are, these are beasts that are like out in the wild. But what I was saying was, is I think watching the Pokemon anime with Ash and stuff as a kid, we don't really, get like the sense of danger that 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 can come from you know pokemon and stuff like that is this must be the teacher i always give it my best when i'm around kids and pokemon because like they the pokemon world always seems like there's no weapons it's oh it's nursery aid like there's no weapons like you you rarely see guns I, I think maybe there was like a hunter's rifle or like one episode someone pulled a gun or something it might have even been pulled from certain regions i can't remember but i remember seeing images of it at least and but my point is is it just seems like it's such it's such a kid friendly thing that uh you know it really gives you a, a sense of oh this is this the pokemon aren't dangerous and whatever but like charger's a dragon dude like he can like fly over a shopping mall and burn it to the ground or you know snorlax can like roll over and crush like villagers or something like you know what i mean i don't know blastoise could drown you like venusaur could strangle you arbok could like you know crush your bones and eat your inner and i don't know it's just like there's just a lot of that stuff i think that's that's sort of overlooked i feel like also, while we're playing this, just as a reminder, take a look at the scrolling marquee down there. Handful of different little things. Um, be sure to join the uh, Pokemon, uh, I'm sorry, the Mark and I Discord server. We've got a Pokemon text channel in there if you want to jump in and talk Pokemon and stuff. I did share a bunch of the leak stuff uh, if you're interested in checking some of that out, as well as the sources that got it. I got it from. Um, you can send me fan mail to the email address mark at markandine.com if you want. Uh, additionally, um, I do have a P.O. box now. I don't know how long I'm going to have it, but we'll see how long. If you want to send me any sort of appropriate and safe to ship fan mail you can do that there too um so take a look at the description box if you're interested in that and then i have an official uh, mark and nine website that is up as well mark and if you want to see what that's all about it's basically just a fun little thing like i'm not selling anything there's not there's nothing there force palm yes um there's nothing there i'm not trying to like push products or any junk on me like that but uh you know take a look at that and uh, let me know what you think. Nice. Oh no, I'm not being a very good example of the kids, am I? Yeah, let's go talk about it. You know, you and me. Over dinner, maybe? Alright. 
Oh, there was also one other thing like in the leaks that I thought was really interesting was they were talking about how like there's some sort of like there's a multiverse thing to Pokemon and I would have to I'm not a whiz at it so I'm not going to even pretend to be but there is talk that like since Pokemon red and blue version those are two alternate universes that linked up and I think it was was it X and Y that first started to explore that like started to talk about it and link it all together I think the idea is that there's two alternate universes that are going side by side, but they are connected. So, like, red and blue are, are opposites, and, you know, things happen there. Gold and silver are opposites. Things happen there, and so forth. Um, ruby and sapphire, and so forth. A double battle. Damn it. Flappy's gonna get KO'd. It's not what I want here. Can I run? I didn't realize double battles can happen in here, but that's interesting. I'm just gonna go. He's fine. Ah, I feel bad not talking to him. I have to get stronger than Team Plasma, but I'm already stronger than you, loser. <laughs> Smell ya! It's my Gary Oak impression. I feel like all rivals should be Gary Oak, and henceforth, if they're not, and they're all friendly and all that junk, I'm gonna make them so. But, uh, but yeah, they were talking about, like, the multiverse thing, and they were talking about, um, sort of, like, all the Pokemon lore that we touched base on, and, like, how, like, Pokemon was created. Two Pokemon. Strong and- oh, damn it. Uh, yeah, strong and strong come together to become very strong. Should have known this was gonna be a battle. Like, one thing they talked about was, like, how the world of Pokemon, uh, and humans got started, and apparently there was, like, this- like, it was kind of like a big bang. There was, like, nothing, and then there was an egg that randomly appeared, and the egg hatched and gave birth to this godlike creature. And then the fragments, the shells of the eggs, they also hatched into, like, deities or, like, some other type of, um... Uh, let's grab a potion, actually. I don't know. Do I have status? And an antidote. I do have one. Um... I think what I should do first is potion him up, though first because he'll take he'll just get knocked out right away after he gets healed i'm just going to do both do antidote use um and then i guess like the 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 fragments of the shell of the egg this this godlike creature um it uh it essentially all the all the fragments turned into other deities and they got into this big battle and then i guess the the godlike being had to fight like all these different deities born of its own shell and then it like after it won the fight it created like a like a god of light and like a god of darkness or something i don't know it's it's all kind of hard to tell because like because i think it was written all in japanese and they were translating it so it's it's i'm really bad at this sort of thing trying to explain it but it's fascinating but at the same time like i I would need to go back and, like, really focus on it to give you a better explanation. But I, I just found that to be interesting. But, like, they talk about how it's a different universe, and that's where, like, Pokemon are involved in that. Like, it's it's a, it's not our, like, gameplay universe, right? Like, it's a universe that's supposed to exist in the in the, in the the mythos of, of the multiversal plane and all that stuff. And I'm like, that's some pretty fascinating concepts to me. I think the lore of Pokemon is very fascinating, but they've always, like, drip-fed it for some reason. I don't really know why. I don't really know why they didn't really go into detail about, like, what their lore and history philosophy is in Pokemon. Because the games have, like, their Pokedex entries that touch base on it. You've got some characters that tell you a little bit. Maybe you find some ruins and there's, like, you know, a miner in there that says something about it. Or you find a, a journal entry or something. You know, it's not, it's not, like, really upfront very well. And it's hard because you have things like the Pokemon anime, and then you've got, uh, you know, the, the manga, which is really good. And then you have things like the games, and, like, they're all very different storylines. So it's like, what the heck is canon? Well, like, let's make sense, you know? Hello. You are with four Pokemon, but if you have more Pokemon, your journey should be even more fun. Here, I'll give you these. Thank you. I didn't put uh, Venipede on my display because I'm not going to use it. You know what they say, cheerful company shortens the miles. Oh, delightful. Oh, phone call. Why not just say phone? Hi, it's your... Man, mom is a baddie. Hi, it's your mom. Where are you right now? Wow, Verbank City. That's a complex there, right? Have you been there yet? 
the way it looks at night is really quite nice, and you can also train your Pokemon there. You know, your Pokemon can do some things, uh... I didn't read that, okay. I hope you can all work together and accomplish amazing things. This is Verbank City, city of falling fog and rising stars. All right, let's go to the... Oh, we've got something going on. I can't tell, is that a female up front? I'm curious. Let me see what Bullpity says so I know what voice to do. Burbank City is an industrial port city often covered by clouds and smoke. The multi-level city uses bridges and stairways to allow residents to move about. Invaluable items can be found in these passageways. Upon arriving in the city, Mom calls on the X-Transceiver to check in and suggest you visit the Verbank Complex at night for a nice view. When you approach Pokemon Center, you can see the local gym leader, Roxy, arguing with her father. Huh. Okay. Interesting. So I'm assuming... So which one is Roxy? Is she the white-haired one? Yeah, Roxy is the white-haired, so the father is in front. Okay, I thought the... Because it looks like the father has a ponytail as well. So I thought maybe... I don't know. Okay. Gotcha. Roxy, don't try and stop me. I'm off to Pokestar Studios to live up to my true potential. My dream is to be a ship captain and a movie star. <laughs> Get real! You're a captain already, aren't you? If that ship doesn't move, you're gonna cause lots of trouble. Oh, dear daughter. You s you split your time between your responsibilities as a gym leader and with your band, right? I can do that too. Seems very immature to be a father. Ugh, you dim-witted, dense, dumb, daft, dippy, dorky, doltish doofus. Doing double duty isn't the problem. You're causing problems for people. Keeping people from getting where they're going because of sheer selfishness is unforgivable. I've had it. Damn it, I didn't see what she said after that. I keep, I get a little click happy. All right, let's go ahead and save that. Oh, let's heal up first and then we'll save that. And then I'm gonna deal with the Venipede situation. And then I need to buy some items with some of the money that we got. But yeah, this whole, this whole leak thing is fascinating. I, uh, hmm. I really, really want to know, like, what's going to happen in the future. Like, it's super serious to the extent that, like, you know, it was obviously against the law like we talked about. But at the same time, I don't know. I'm very curious as to what the modding community, like, what it's going to be like, you know? What is this going to do for us? Um, let's see. Let's do an antidote. I'll buy five of them. How many do I have? Okay. Oh, it's expensive. It's a lot of money. Okay, potions. We have 300. How many do I have? Yeah, it's not good. Okay, that's about as best as we're going to do for now. That's fine. But anyway, we'll we'll talk about that later. The, obviously, this playthrough is not about, like, the leaks. I just, you know, sometimes I feel the dead air with topics, and I think that's an interesting one um, that, uh, that is worth bringing up. But, you know, whatever. Look it up. See what you can find and let me know if you find anything interesting and parse out that data. Share what you want in the Mark and I Discord and all that good stuff. And we can, uh, you know, we can talk about that and more later on. For now, though, if you enjoyed this episode of our playthrough of Pokemon Black 2, you can show your love by hitting the like button. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. Any feedback for me, leave in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And then, as I said, take a look at the description box. Look at those links and see if there's anything interesting down there, like joining the Mark and I Discord uh, uh, community server if you want to be part of that. The PO box is down there, um, etc, etc, etc. But, but uh, whatever. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you when we continue on with our playthrough of Pokemon Black 2. Take it easy.